10 Thumbs Blues Challenge in D, day 9 of 15. You're doing great. Take a second to pat yourself on the back. The focus of today's lesson is the blue note, but we're also going to do a little more advanced finger picking as well. As always, the tabs for our challenges are free. You will see the link pinned in the first comment of the comment section. Check our other social networks as well as in the description. And if you like those tabs, think about becoming a Patreon. Let's do it. Grab the ukulele brain attention span, follow me on in, and let's take a look at the blue note. So the opportunities moving forward to do something more advanced finger picking, I've kind of have a rough draft of the rest of the lessons. It's going to be kind of tricky. So I snuck in some more advanced ideas finger picking in this lesson. But if it's overwhelming the blue note, the riffs, and the finger picking, feel free to do any kind of rhythm you want outside of the blues note. So what is the blues note? Well, we talked about arpeggios last time. Right? And we did that D7 arpeggio, which was root 3, 5, flat 7, root but if you noticed we play this note in our arpeggio but in the scale we play this note well make a D minor and make a D major you probably notice this notes the same this notes the same this notes the same the only difference between these two is this note here. The blues scale is built off the D minor pentatonic. The D7 arpeggio is built off the D7. Blues is a major progression that uses a minor scale. To my knowledge, it's the only one that I know that does this. It's very, very unique. So, that uniqueness creates unique opportunities. And the unique opportunity is what's called the blue note. The blue note is this space between these two notes. If we give this note here just a little nudge up by playing it and pushing that finger upwards, we're playing a note that's not an F note, it's not an F sharp, it's in between the two. It's called a quarter bend. And that space between those two notes is our blue note. It's a magic thing that happens only in the blues where by pushing this up a little bit, we use the F note to imply the F major. So to illustrate this even more, we talked about yesterday's arpeggio below, root, third, five, flat, seven, seven. And that's the first arpeggio I have below us. Below that, I have a D minor seven arpeggio, which is two, one, five, three, seven. And you're not gonna really be using that for the blues, but you might use it in your playing. It's also movable the same way we move those other arpeggios from the other day. Okay, so it's a movable arpeggio, but it's just to illustrate again, this minor third is in our scale, major third is in our chord. This uniqueness is part of what makes the blues sound like the blues. Okay, so right here I have a two measure lick. Let me play it for you. Wow, that's so bluesy, so bluesy. The most bluesy lick that we've played so far in the whole challenge for sure. We're gonna start off four, three, one with a triplet and we're getting that flat fifth and there, the devil's fifth. Very cool. Four, three, one, two. One pola, two, and our scale. We're gonna hammer from the scale to the second fret. And so here we're going kind of from scale to arpeggio. This minor third to major third hammer on is a very, very, very bluesy sound. And then we're gonna play the second fret of the D string on the fourth beat. One pola, two, and three, four now technically like i said the blues note is these between these two notes but this hammer on from the minor third to the major third it's somewhat similar to the idea of a blues note where you're pushing up from that major or minor third to the major third do 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 
Okay, in the second half of this lick, we're gonna go three, one, two. One and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. Third fret, first fret, eighth notes. Then it's just quarter notes, second fret. Go down to the first fret and just push your finger up. Just a little piece of information from an old guy. Bends are a lot harder, closer to the nut. Just a lot more tension here. So it's gonna be kind of difficult, just do your best. A little nudge goes a long way. That'd be a cool bumper sticker. Hey, blues guys, a little nudge goes a long way. So that second half is one and two, three, four. If we put them both together, we get one pull a two and three, four, one and two, three, four. All right, so here's the next lick. The last one we played, we're gonna play those over measures three and four. This one we're gonna play over measures seven and eight. Usually that's where the licks goes, measures three and four, and seven and eight. Because you sing over one and two, lick over three and four, sing over five and six, lick over seven and eight, sing over nine and 10, then the turnaround. That's normally how it goes. Okay, so here, this next lick, two, one hammer two, two, curl. A quarter bend is called a blues curl, just because that's really the only place that this really happens. One and two, three, four. Then the next measure, second fret, bend again, and that one's going to be third and fourth beat. One, two, three. That lick is substantially easier, so if, you, if the first one's too hard for you, feel free to play that second lick two times as well. So we get one and two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, let's just take a look at the turnaround. A7, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. For the A and the G7, it's three downs. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Turn around. Okay, and we're doing a couple new things here with this turnaround. We're combining this one with this one by playing the fifth and third fret together. Two and four, one and three, and then two and zero. And then up until now, we've walked up. Do, do, do. But you can also walk down by playing one half step above the A7, the B flat seven, and then down to the A7. So it's one, two, and three, four, into the top. So the turnaround really slow. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, boom, into the top. All right, so here's the first four measures. We're gonna discuss the finger picking quickly if it's too hard for you, feel free to strum instead. It sounds like this. Really nice. Pluck the D note, and then you're gonna pinch here. One, two, then it's C string, E string on the off beat, G string, E string on the off beat. One, two, three, and four, and boom. Back to the second fret. The second measure is the exact same, except we don't play the very last note. So it goes one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. Triple a do, 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 do. Okay, again, feel free to, sh if that is just overwhelming both at the same time, feel free to modify that D7 rhythm. The G, okay, then we get to the G, and we're gonna see triplets in our finger picking for the first time. We're gonna go one, two, three, pull a four. Right, and it's open G, E string, C string. One, two, three, pull a four. Fourth fret and the fourth beat being the second fret of the A string. Then after that, one, two, three, and four. A little more traditional after that. And then we have a riff. 
All right, this is the most difficult 12 bar we've done so far. Let's take it from the top because it's also the tastiest. Again, before I jump in, I know I'm reiterating and kind of sound like a broken record. If the finger picking and the licks are too difficult, feel free to strum through and skip the finger picking, save it for another day. Here we go. One, two, three, four. You'll be right back in the top. And just like that, my friends, that is the blues note. Or the blue note. I keep saying the blues note. The blue note is better. All right. Until next time, rock and roll. Take care. Really, really powerful stuff. When you hear people say the BB box, essentially, they're kind of shifting from major to minor. And the blue note does play on this interesting major chords but minor scale that makes the blues harmonically so unique now over time the blues has become more in a box as the more it's been studied the more it's been examined the more it's been standardized the very very beginning it was a lot more loose but one thing has always been true seven chords is in dominant seven chords with the minor scale that sound is at the core, along with call and response, the heart of blues music and what makes it so unique. Being able to manage the blue note, channel the blue note, and understand the blues note, the blue note, not the blues note, the blue note gives you a certain amount of power and blues power, we'll call it, in your fingers. That's really, really pretty savvy and definitely takes your playing to the next level. All right, great job as always, and we'll catch you in two days for the next lesson. Have a lovely day. You're doing great.